Wi-Fi hacking has been the coolest thing to me since the start of my journey, and it's probably the same for you, right? Hacking into a Wi-Fi network is something everyone wants to do, but can you imagine how valuable this skill is when it comes to ethical hacking? Wi-Fi hacking is an essential part of penetration testing. It can be an entry point for an attacker to infiltrate an organization. If it's not secured, the doors are always open for an attacker to easily get into the targeted network. Well, in this video, we're going to learn how Wi-Fi hacking works and how we can make our Wi-Fi more secure. We will capture a network handshake file. Using my own network, of course, attacking someone else's network without permission is strictly prohibited and illegal. After capturing the handshake, we'll crack it using Hashcat and Aircrack NG. I've only covered one technique in this video, but if you want to learn Wi-Fi hacking in depth, I've got something for you. The Wi-Fi hacking complete guide that I made. This 40-page guide contains 10 different techniques to hack into Wi-Fi networks, detailed with screenshots, attack flow diagrams, commands, and the tools used for each attack. If you really want to learn Wi-Fi hacking, this could be a great resource for you. You can grab it for just $10 using the first link in the description or check out our shop for other PDFs you might like. Let's get back to the video. Before jumping directly into the terminal and Kaylee Linux, I want to explain how Wi-Fi handshake capture attacks work and how attackers exploit them. A handshake in Wi-Fi security is the four-way authentication process that occurs when a device connects to a network. It verifies that the device knows the correct PSK without actually transmitting the password over the air. For a deeper understanding, you can check out the PDF file. It goes into much more detail. Now, if we manage to capture this handshake somehow, we can perform a brute force attack and crack the password, right? Now that you understand how handshake capture attacks work, let's move to Kali Linux and perform this attack practically. But to conduct this attack successfully, you need a few things. First, an external Wi-Fi adapter that supports monitor mode and packet injection. If you're unfamiliar with this, Wi-Fi adapters come with different modes, which depend entirely on the chipset the company uses. Generally, all Wi-Fi adapters adapters have managed mode, which allows us to scan for nearby Wi-Fi networks and connect to them if we have the right password. But monitor mode is different. It lets us see nearby Wi-Fi networks and the devices connected to them without even being connected to that network. There are many different Wi-Fi adapters available online that you can buy. I've made a list of some budget-friendly and cool ones, which you can find in the PDF file, so don't forget to grab it real quick. Once you have a Wi-Fi adapter, we need to set up a few tools and other things in Kali Linux. First, you need to check how you are running Kali Linux. If Kali Linux is directly installed on your laptop or computer or you have dual boot, you can plug in your Wi-Fi adapter and use it directly. However, if you're using virtual machines, you'll have to connect it manually because in virtual machines, we don't always have direct access to external devices. If you're running Kali Linux via live boot, you're also good to go. Keep in mind that I'm using Kali Linux for this tutorial, but that doesn't mean Kali is the only operating system you can use for this kind of stuff. Any Linux-based OS will work as long as you have the right tools, I'm going to show you how to install them. All right, now connect your Wi-Fi adapter to your computer. If you're using virtual machines, check out the guides linked in the description to learn how to connect your Wi-Fi adapter to your VM. Now, open your terminal and run the following commands to fully update your system. This step is optional but highly recommended. Once your system is updated, we need to install a few tools. First is Aircrack NG, which we'll use to capture the handshake file that we'll crack later using Hashcat. Aircrack NG comes pre-installed with Kali Linux, but if it's missing, you can install it quickly by running the shown command. Once this is installed, we move to the actual handshake capture process. In your terminal, type iwconfig. This will display a list of network interfaces connected to your system. If you don't see anything, type lsusb, which will list all external devices connected to your computer. If you're wondering why we're doing this, relax, I'll clear it up for you. When you plug in a new adapter or any new hardware, you often need to install drivers for it. Now, if your Wi-Fi adapter doesn't appear in the IW config output but does show up in the LSUSB output, it means the adapter is recognized by the system but doesn't have the necessary drivers installed. In that case, you'll need to search for your adapter's model and follow the installation procedure for its drivers. There are plenty of tutorials available online for this, so I won't cover the driver installation part here since it would make the video too long. Once you have successfully installed your Wi-Fi driver, you should see your adapter listed in the output of IW config. If it appears, just remember the interface name. In my case, it's WLAN 0, but yours might be different. Now, our Wi-Fi adapter is in managed mode by default. The first thing we need to do is switch it to monitor mode, which allows us to scan nearby Wi-Fi networks and capture traffic, which is exactly what we need for this attack. To enable monitor mode, type the shown command, replacing WLAN 0 with your actual interface, but for most of the time, it is going to be WLAN 0. When you hit enter, it will ask for your password, and once entered, you'll see that monitor mode has been enabled on your Wi-Fi adapter. There's also an important 
important step to consider, which is optional but can be very helpful. If you were using your Wi-Fi adapter for an internet connection before switching to monitor mode, the Network Manager service, which is responsible for managing internet connections on Linux, might force the adapter back into managed mode, interrupting the attack process. To prevent this, you can run sudo ng check kill, which will terminate all processes that could interfere with our attack. Don't worry about remembering all the commands, you can find them easily in the PDF file. Now if you run the command IW config once again, you will likely see that your Wi-Fi adapter is now in monitor mode. Sometimes, when you enable monitor mode on a Wi-Fi adapter, its interface name changes. So if you notice that the name has been altered, make sure to use the correct one in the following steps. Now that our device is in monitor mode, we can scan for Wi-Fi networks around us and capture their traffic. I'm going to perform this demonstration on my own Wi-Fi network, and you should never attempt this on a network that you do not own or have explicit permission to test. To start scanning for available Wi-Fi networks, you need to run the aerodump ng command, followed by your Wi-Fi adapter's interface name. For example, if your interface name is WLAN0, you would enter sudo aerodump ng WLAN0 in the terminal. This command will start scanning for all the Wi-Fi networks in range, displaying their details such as BSSID, which is the unique MAC address of the access point, channel number, and the number of connected clients. For privacy reasons, I will be blurring some details in the video, but you will see a list of networks appear in the terminal. Among them, you should identify your target network, the one you own, because we will be performing all our tests on it. I recommend letting Aerodump NG run for at least 60 seconds so it can scan and collect data from all available networks properly. After a minute, you can stop the scan by pressing Ctrl plus C, but do not clear the terminal output as we will need the information displayed. Now take a quick look at the Aerodump NG output. You will see details about your network, such as the BSSID, which uniquely identifies the access point, the channel number, and the number of clients connected. You should note down the BSSID and the channel number, as we will need them for the next step. Additionally, you can also note down the MAC addresses of connected clients. Although this is optional, I recommend saving this information because it will be useful for the next stage of the attack. Up to this point, we were just scanning all the Wi-Fi networks around us to gather basic information. Now that we have identified our target, we need to capture the handshake by monitoring only this specific network. To do this, we need to run Aerodump NG again, but this time, we will focus only on our target network instead of scanning everything. The correct syntax for this command includes specifying the BSSID, the channel number, and an output file to save the handshake data. The command should be structured as follows. First, you have to write sudo, obviously, for super user permissions. Then you have to write Aerodump NG. Now, after this, we have to specify our target's BSSID. You can use the following flag for it. After that, we have specify the channel for our target. You can use the following flag for specifying the channel of your target. And finally, you can use dash dash write flag and specify the name of file where you want to write the handshakes. And finally, don't forget to specify your interface name. Once you execute this command, Aerodump NG will start capturing packets only from the target network instead of all surrounding networks. You will now see only your selected network and its connected clients in the terminal. At this stage, we are waiting to capture the handshake, which happens when a device connects or reconnects to the network. However, waiting for a device to reconnect naturally can take a long time, so we can speed up the process by forcing a device to disconnect which will make it reconnect automatically. This process is called a deauthentication attack or deauth attack and is a common technique used to force a device to reconnect so that we can capture its handshake. This method is clearly explained in my PDF guide, but I will also demonstrate it here. To perform this attack, open a new terminal tab or a new terminal window and enter the airplay ng command to send deauthentication packets to the target network. Type sudo and then airplay ng and then after that specify the number of packets by using deauth flag and after that specify your target's BSSID by using dash A flag, and then finally your interface name. For example, if you want to send 100 deauthentication packets to the access point with following BSSID using the interface WLAN0, the command should look something like this. This will start sending deauthentication packets, which will disconnect all clients from the network. However, instead of disconnecting all clients, it is considered better practice to deauthenticate only one specific client rather than disrupting the entire network. To do this, you need to add 
add the dash C flag followed by the MAC address of the target client, which you noted earlier. After running the command, you will see deauthentication packets being sent to the target. Typically, it takes 5 to 10 seconds to disconnect a client, but this time may vary depending on factors such as signal strength, distance, and interference. If the attack is not working as expected, you can try increasing the number of deauthentication packets. Once a client gets disconnected, it will automatically reconnect, and at that moment, Aerodump NG, which is still running in the previous terminal, should capture the handshake. To verify this, check the top right corner of the terminal running Aerodump NG. If the handshake has been successfully captured, you will see a message indicating that it has been recorded. If you do not see this message, try repeating the deauthentication attack until the handshake is captured. Keep in mind that this process can sometimes take longer, depending on external factors like network congestion and signal strength. At this point, we have successfully captured the handshake, which means we now have encrypted authentication data from the network. This data will be used in the next step, where we attempt to crack the Wi-Fi password using Hashcat, a powerful password cracking tool. But before moving forward, make sure that you have saved the handshake file, as it contains the information needed for the next stage. Now that we have successfully captured the handshake, we can attempt to crack the Wi-Fi password using different methods. The two most common approaches are dictionary attacks and brute force attacks, and we can use tools like Aircrack NG or Hashcat to achieve this. The first and simplest method is to use Aircrack NG with a dictionary attack. A dictionary attack works by systematically testing passwords from a predefined list known as a word list against the captured handshake. If the correct password is included in the word list, Aircrack NG will successfully crack the handshake. One of the most popular word lists for this purpose is the RockU word list, which contains millions of commonly used passwords. It is often sufficient for cracking weak or simple passwords. To use Aircrack NG for cracking the handshake, we need to specify our captured handshake file along with a word list. Just type sudo aircrack dash ng and then dash w to specify word list. You can use rocku or any other word lists. But in the tutorial, I'm going to use rocku word list. After specifying the full path to your word lists, just type your handshake file name. Aircrack ng will then start testing each password from the word list against the captured handshake. If the correct password is found in the word list, it will be displayed on the screen and you will have successfully cracked the Wi-Fi password. However, a dictionary attack has its limitations. If the password is not included in the word list, Aircrack NG will fail to crack it. In such cases, we can attempt a brute force attack using Hashcat. Unlike dictionary attacks, brute force attacks systematically generate and test every possible password combination, making them much more powerful but also significantly more time-consuming. Hashcat allows us to define specific character sets, password lengths, and attack modes to optimize the cracking process based on the complexity of the target password. If the Aircrack NG method fails, we can move on to using Hashcat, which I will explain in the next part. Now let's see how we can crack the handshake file using Hashcat. If you're unfamiliar with Hashcat, it is a powerful password cracking tool that is extremely fast because it utilizes the GPU instead of the CPU, significantly speeding up the process. If you have a high-performance graphics card, the cracking speed will be even better. Before we proceed with cracking, we need to convert the handshake file into a Hashcat compatible format. Hashcat does not directly accept CAP files, so we need to install HTX tools, which helps in converting handshake files into the required format. Once HTX Tools is installed, we use a simple command to transform our captured handshake into a format that Hashcat can process. After this, we can directly use Hashcat for the brute force attack. Hashcat offers multiple attack modes and methods, making it one of the most versatile cracking tools available. Since explaining all of Hashcat's functionalities would take a long time, let me know if you would like a dedicated video on it. If Hashcat is not installed on your system, you can install it easily and then proceed with the attack. Brute force attacks depend entirely on the complexity of the password and the hardware you're using. For example, when I tested it on my system, my CPU took around 3 minutes to crack a 17-character all lowercase password, whereas my GPU cracked it in just a few seconds. This shows the massive difference a powerful GPU can make in password cracking speed. This is just one method of Wi-Fi hacking, and I could barely cover it in a single video. However, my PDF file includes 10 different Wi-Fi hacking techniques with 40 pages of in-depth explanations, attack flow diagrams, step-by-step -step commands, and screenshots. You can grab it for just $10 from the link in the description. Now, because you have watched video this long, it means you're really interested in Wi-Fi hacking. Just use the discount code HACKME to get 30% off till the 20th of March. If you need one-on-one -on -one guidance from me and other cybersecurity experts, consider joining our monthly memberships through the link in the description. Membership gives you free access to all resources, a special role in our Discord server, and access to private channels where you can find us online most of the time. That's
That's all I have for you in this video. If you found this guide useful, subscribe to the channel and like the video for more detailed content like this. I'm focusing on making in-depth hacking tutorials instead of short videos so you can gain practical hacking knowledge instead of just theory. And don't forget to grab the PDF file. It's worth much more than you think. Thanks for watching.